give it a few minutes and we'll let people get on. So when you do get on, uh, be sure and uh, tell me where you're from. Hi there. Okay, so we are live. So be sure and comment, tell me where you're from and we'll give it a few minutes and let everybody uh, join in, okay? Mm. Hi, Tina. Hi, Jackie. This is on Facebook tonight. She's usually on YouTube. T Bert says you're usually on YouTube, Tisa. <laughs> you're you're uh, messing with him. He thinks he's... <laughs> Something's different. Hi, Rosemary. Okay, so it looks like people are starting to find me. Good evening, everyone. I'm Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. And tonight we're gonna to be doing a ceramic project. I'm working on uh, bisque and we're gonna use color concentrates mixed with our gloss medium. Okay, so we'll give it a few more minutes and uh, let everybody get on. So if you're new to this, you, I'm starting to lose my voice, sorry. If you're new to the lives, be sure and comment during the live and you'll have a chance at winning a prize. So my husband is my helper and he will read any questions you might have to me and then I'll answer those. And uh, he will spin through the comments at the end and pick winners, okay? So I've got a couple of different prizes for tonight, okay? All right, looks like we've got quite a few on. Oh, she's talking to you. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. So this is the piece. Um, I just posted the fired piece on Facebook. So this is, um, oh gosh, about a 10 inch plate. I'm going to show you how to do the watercolor background. Um, I did transfer the pattern just now, but I will uh, demonstrate that so that you know how that works also. Okay. I'm here, but look looked for you on Facebook. I am on Facebook, Janet. Um, you'll just have to go to my personal page, but you can watch either way. It's, uh, he will still know that you're there and you'll be included in the, you know, the spin at the end for um, a prize. Okay. So don't yeah, worry about unless, unless you mess with him. <laughs> unless you mess with him, he says. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So this is the piece that we're going to do tonight. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm assuming everybody can hear me fine. I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to hide this and I'm going to go. Okay, so I do want to make sure that you can hear me before I move on since I did switch cameras. Sometimes we have an issue with that. Um, the website is scrolling at the bottom. I'll turn that off in just a second and the phone number, email. So if you uh, need to reach me, those are places that you can find our products. You can email me or you can call me. Okay. Veronica from Ontario, Canada. All right. Hi, Helen. Leslie. Okay. All right, guys. So let me uh, turn this off real quick. Okay. So everybody can hear me okay? Is that we are good? with volume and everything. Hopefully, yes, okay, thank you, Eva. All right, great. Mm -hmm. Of course, my husband can hear me because he's sitting across from me. Um, okay, so what I did was I took uh, the t uh, my pattern and laid a piece of tissue paper over it. And I will post this pattern for you later, okay? And a list of the colors and everything. I'll put it in a blog post. Um, so if you wanna do this, you can. So I laid the tissue over it. I drew uh, the pattern out with pencil, okay? And then what I do is put it where I want it on the piece. And I moved this one over just a little bit more. I do have a little turntable underneath me to make it easier. Um, it's just a little Lazy Susan type thing. So what you do is just go on your lines, your pencil lines, and I'm just going to pretend there's, you know, there's a line out here. It'll fire away. I'm not worried about it, but you can see how it goes through. Okay. So now this is not completely solid. Okay. And that's fine. If you want to draw on there, you can. This is a Statler 
tri plus fine liner and it has a tip like a sharpie it's a water-based marker it will burn away so if you like this it will not be there okay it'll burn off if you see an area of the pattern and you say oh i really can't see that you could go on here you know and go over it if you wanted to but you don't have to okay all right so we've got more people joining us um so anyway um if you weren't here at the beginning i'm paula mccoy and owner of colors for earth and we're going to be working with colors for earth color concentrates we also use this in the glass um, decorating also but tonight we're working on ceramic bisque okay you could do this technique on greenware also if you wanted okay so if depends on what you like to do so i transferred the pattern and then we'll just set that to the side okay so the first thing that we need to do is i need to put in my background this is just a watercolor background i'm going to be using uh, sumi brushes to do this and I'm going to use the medium sumi. Sorry, my labels are off. I'm going to be using 160 key lime and 161 green leaf. We are going to mix those. I think you can see my palette there. And I'll zoom in when we get to something that we need a little bit closer. So we're going to use 60 and 61. So always shake your color before you use them, okay? Um, they are thixotropic, it's called, so they congeal, they're in a gel base. So the more you shake or agitate them, they liquefy, okay? So you're gonna think there's, when you get to the bottom of your bottle, you're gonna think that there's not any color left in there, and there is, if you just shake that up, you'll see that. And then what I'm gonna do is our gloss medium NT clear glaze. This is our clear glaze, two coats of clear glaze over our colors. And you will see the color through the glaze, unlike some other brands out there on the market. But I'm also going to use this as the word medium basically is an extender and opener. So what it's going to do when I add it to my colors is keep them open longer and allow me to manipulate and blend and do my technique. Okay. So that we used to uh, have the leaded clear glaze years ago. And of course we had to get rid of that, what, eight or nine years ago. So I'm going to do a pretty much a 50-50 mix. I tend to mix with my handle of my brush. I, you won't waste as much product. Okay. And I like to put a sponge in the middle of my palette. That way I can wipe my brush off or wipe my end of my brush like I'm doing here. Okay. So if you have any questions, um, it can be on anything. But tonight we are ceramic, but Bert will read those questions off to me, okay? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thin these with some water. So I'm gonna, I've just got some water in a bottle and I'm gonna just fill up the rest of that well with water. And then I'm gonna mix them before, always dampen your brush before you start. You can blot it. In this case, you don't have to because we're working uh, with a thinned product, okay? So you can see, um, hold on one second, click show. Oh, something wasn't popping up. You don't see anything at the bottom of the screen, do you, Bert? And now I just spilled all my color. <laughs> Be live, but, Be live. okay, guys, on your screen, do you only see like my camera or do you see something across the bottom of the screen for some reason it popped up on my end um which is um is it showing on facebook yeah oh my goodness i don't want that on there yeah i don't like that why is that they've changed um It went away now. Okay, I think it's gone. You don't? Okay, one second, guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, give me just a second. I'm trying to look at some controls here and find out. Um, you may have to refresh, Bert. Okay, so I've thinned this down, and what I'm going to do is just sit it down and kind of move my brush around. But I'm not lifting the brush 
off of the piece. And the reason I'm not doing that is because if you set it down and set it down and set it down, you're going to get what I call little rabbit tracks all the way across. So you want to be able to um, do the whole background without having, you know, little tiny brush marks, in other words. Okay, so I'm going to go back and forth between the two colors. They're very close in color. So I'm just butting them up next to each other. And if you lift off, you get a splatter. I got a little dot there. And let me go just a little bit closer. You can see that little green dot. So that's what you want to avoid. You, you don't want to be lifting your brush. You're bouncing it. And I'm going to avoid my design also. So I'm just going to go back and forth. And you can see that that marker fades out because it's got moisture on it which is fine because that's just where I showed you, okay? So that's not gonna be there. So I'm just kind of gonna go back and forth between the different colors and intermingle them to achieve, I think you can see a little bit of this one over here. Um, and then just be careful. I don't wanna get it where my um, orange and red flowers are. So I do wanna be careful, but it is a very quick background and you need to work it wet on wet. Um, and I'm just going between the different. Can you see the comments now, Bert? Nope. I don't want to have a screen either. Okay. Sign back onto it. Sorry, guys. He's lost all the comments, and we got to have him for the comments <laughs> in order for the drawing. So I'm trying to get him back on. I don't know, I don't know what's going on just um the saved down there for be live click on it and then hit sign in so i'm going back and forth between the two what do you mean i'm gone now you can't see me can you hear me like they're talking about the oh the other thing the the little footer thing that was down there okay i would say you can still see me right guys <laughs> i hope where did you say I have to it should be one of the bookmarks on this screen. Okay, so I'm just going back and forth quickly. I may have to go to his computer in two seconds and help him get back to the comments. Let me get this on Bert first. Okay, so I, it doesn't matter that I'm going over the um, stems and stuff, or even if I get on the leaves. And I'll show you how to correct if you get on the petals also. Okay. Now, if you have an area like this one here, it's too dark. So I just dipped into my water bowl, my clean water. And I'm just going back. Because I've got that medium in there, the gloss medium. Like I said, it, it's an extender, an opener. And it's going to keep it open long enough for me to manipulate and move it around. So I'm just going back and forth constantly turning so that I don't get any brush marks or patterned brush marks, you might call it. But it's a quick and easy background. Um, it gives you that watercolor, china painted type background. Um, I used to use it a lot. I'm going to grab some just clean water on my brush and uh, thin that out there and move it around. See how I did that? I just grabbed into the water bowl. And like I said, I'm not worried about whether it gets on the leaves or not because that is uh, one of the colors in the leaves. And you can kind of see that some areas are darker I'm going to keep moving it around. I'm going to add a little more water to my darker color to thin it out. Even though it's only one shade darker, I want it uh, not extremely heavy. So constantly turn. This is the medium semi brush. It's a natural hair brush. It's a black squirrel. And it holds a lot of water, a lot of product. Um, 
you could do this um, similar to this on glass, but I do have a YouTube video on doing a watercolor background. Uh, it has a toucan on it for the glass people, uh, just using your enamels. That's what I would do on that particular. Okay, now I did do it on the back, but I'm not gonna take the time tonight uh, to do that. I'll do it after we finish. Any questions or did you find, are you signed in Mr. Burt? Okay, give me two seconds guys. Let me go get him to see your comments so he can tell me. Yes, dear. That's when that happened. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Give me just a second. I'll be right back. Two seconds. Hold on, guys. Okay, you're just gonna have to go to Facebook. I don't wanna. You're gonna have to do it the old way. Something happened to it. Okay, so if you wanna thin out an area, technical difficulties, you know, that's what happens when it's live. So, all right. So you can go back with just water in the brush and just move it around. And remember, when you're moving it, you're not removing it. You're just pushing it somewhere else. If you want to remove color, you would have to wipe off color on your um, paper towel or on your sponge, okay? So what I did was just come over here. So if I was in here and I had just water on my brush and I wanted some of that color off, I'm just going to blot it on my paper towel, okay? as opposed to just moving it into a new area on the piece. Now, because you do this type of background, you will not be able to fire your piece that day. You're putting a lot of moisture and all it's gonna do is cause your glaze to bubble, okay? So don't try to do this and then fire your piece that night unless you uh, put a fan on it and you really make sure it's bone dry. But if it feels cool to the touch, then it is not dry enough to fire, okay? And you sure don't want it um, blowing up in your kiln uh, because of the moisture, okay? All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'll show you the back, see the background? I just did the same thing all over the back on that piece, okay? And I'm gonna turn it upside down so you can kind of see the design there. All right, so the uh, next colors that I'm gonna do Everybody understand the background? So I mixed uh, 